Scariest Paranormal Encounter While at Work? I worked at Capital Metro back in 08 making breakfast for the bus drivers in Austin, Texas in the cafe inside. I had to be at work at 4 a.m. Jose was my supervisor and was usually the only one in the cafe doing prep when I arrived, but occasionally there was this other guy Juan who would help. Well one morning, I walk in and I say what's up to Jose as he was refilling the chips on the rack. I see who I thought was Juan walking to the back where we cut various vegetables for all the meals, and I said, naturally, what's up Juan? While walking to the sink to wash my hands before helping with prep. Jose walks quickly around and asks me whom I'm talking to. I thought he was joking and I turn to point to Juan in the cutting area which is a dead end by the watt and see no one there to my surprise. I straight up got chills when I realized why Jose was asking that, not to mention the sound of his voice, plus look on his face when he did. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, and one of the bus drivers was telling us how the building used to be a slaughterhouse, and that several people died in some pretty horrific accidents. After he said that, I remember that the figure I thought was Juan was wearing a white apron, but the aprons we had were red, more chills. One lady said there is a ghost that regularly closes her door at various times of the day, and these doors are heavy, so the likelihood of them moving on their own due to the AC is virtually impossible. The security guard who would let me in during the early morning offered to let me explore upstairs where the most activity is at night if I wanted, but sadly, I never took him up on it before I was let go. I used to be a supervisor doing trauma scene cleanup work. This was going back about 20 years ago. We used to do everything from suicides, homicides, unattended deaths, explosions, fires and accidents. I have a few stories, but I won't make this a super long post. Being on 24-hour call, we would get emergency calls at all hours. One night it was past midnight, we got a call of a fire at a house. Well the fire was already put out, but we were called to go remove debris from public view, board up the property, and make sure there is nothing unsafe as possible. It was reported that the family suffered multiple deaths in the fire, so we had to make sure the scene was secure for investigators. Once we arrived, the house was at the end of cul-de-sac, large two-story house in a nice neighborhood. My partner and I got to work right away, our first objective was to board up the openings cut by the firefighters. Inside was very dark because like every fire, the electricity is cut off. We normally carried old 6-volt lanterns, and we also carried a hammer hatchet on our work belts. The inside was still very hot from the fire, and there was debris everywhere, my partner Jay was a big football player type of guy, so I always knew if we ever ran into trouble, we'd have each other's backs. We started boarding up a large sliding door in the back of the house just off the kitchen, we both kept stopping and looking around, we did this without expressing to each other, until we glanced at each other and said, did you see that? What we were seeing was shadows moving behind us, but as soon as we turned around or flashed our mag lights over, nothing was there. We started working at a faster pace while still looking over our shoulders. That is until we heard a noise from upstairs. Now you have to understand it's not uncommon for kids or people to be inside unattended burn structures. Sometimes for curiosity, sometimes to see what they can steal. Assuming that we would either confront kids or some bum trying to steal from this family, we grabbed our lights and hammers in hand and went upstairs. We cleared each room starting in the room closest to the top of the stairs, he would enter the room, and I would stay in the hallway, and we would switch off eventually coming to the bathroom at the end of the hall, and just thought, okay we just heard settling noise from the fire. After all most of the roof and ceiling were gone just rafters above. The fire was so devastating that most of the upstairs was almost burnt off from about midway up the wall to the roof. We make our way back downstairs and start working on another window when once again, we heard another noise from upstairs. It didn't sound like settling, but like if someone was dragging something and with footsteps. We continued working until we heard noises from upstairs again, and it sounded like a door closing. We both were like, okay let's go. We went back upstairs and searched room to room, closets, under beds, every inch of space a human could be. Nothing. We go back downstairs and continue working, still hearing noises from upstairs and still seeing shadows around us. Our last task was to secure the front door. All of the openings that needed boarding up downstairs were secure, so we shut the front door and begin to secure it when all of a sudden, someone started banging on the door from the inside. I turn to Jay and he is already running to our truck, as I grab our stuff and run after him. By the time I reach the truck, he is already backing it out of the driveway. 
I jump in and we are driving about a mile down the road when I yell over to him that the back roll-up door is still open, he says fleed that, I am not stopping. Maybe this happens to others, maybe not. I work in a 100-year-old factory that has been updated many times. Modern shell but ancient bones. The roof moans when it's windy outside, ventilation flaps bang often, and the 1960s heating system is noisy as heck. Needless to say, my sensitivity is very low, and I tune out 99% of these noises. Since I am the engineering manager at the plant, I'm stuck working late and on weekends sometimes. I get a ton of work done after normal hours. Many times the production manager, Felix, works late too. We are used to each other's after-hours habits and noises, machinery, forklift, sporadic phone calls. My office is pretty well soundproofed from the production area, but I can hear some of what he is doing. One night it's about 9 p.m., and I'm thinking about wrapping it up when I hear men arguing in the production area. It had been quiet for at least two hours prior, so I assumed Felix left. Then the arguing moves away from my lab, then closer. Close enough to hear that I do not recognize the voices. Hair stands up on the back of my neck. Felix? Can't be burglary, our security system is set. I'm locked in basically. Then the voices change from men arguing to what I can only describe as non-human, but still communicating words. Barking? Growling? Werewolves? My palms are sweating, heart is racing, I'm sitting straight up in my chair. It's getting louder. Like 10 feet from my lab door. Adrenaline explodes and I grab my keys and security badge and run out the back door from my lab, swipe my badge to disarm the security system, burst through the security doors, lightning quick rearm the system, sprint around to the front of the plant, see my car is the sole vehicle in the lot. Drove that Honda 80 miles per hour all the way home. Almost soaked my pants. First thing I do the next morning is to check the security log on our facility server, and I see I set alarm at 9.10, and my boss opened up at 6 a.m. No other door sensors were tripped. I pull Felix aside and cautiously tell him what happened. He simply said he was afraid to work late alone and that he and I should sync up so neither of us are working solo. That was the last we ever talked about it and Felix and I never work late alone anymore. I work at Eastern State Penitentiary every Halloween season. My first season I experienced a few things. Firstly, I knew about how haunted the penitentiary is, but I wanted to get over my fear of ghosts, so far so good. I was stationed in a cell block that is super dark, the only light you get is from lasers we have set up. Sometimes I would be all the way in the back off the cell block by myself and would feel my costume getting tugged on. I used to think it was my coworker, but then I would realize she was on break. Most times, my hair would get pulled and my arm would feel like someone was touching it. One night when I was starting my shift, I was looking in the cells and I came across this one cell that was darker than the others, I peeked my head in to see what was making it so dark and the next thing I knew, I saw a face of pure evil. No eyes, no smile. I ran down the cell block refusing to go back alone. Near the end of my first season, one of the supervisors came and said, I can't see how you guys can work over here. I, not knowing much of where I was, didn't know what she meant. She stated that the cell block next over, that's blocked off and completely off limits for everyone, was death row, and there were stories about the lady in red being there next door as well. I did not work in that cell block the next season. I work in a hospital one evening. I was working in a closed department that used to be an old TB ward. At about 8 p.m. in the winter, so pitch black, I went to close up, so turned off all the lights and closed the doors to either wing, two separate wings, one is a small urology theater and offices, and the other is a waiting area and consultation rooms. I was a little early for home time, so waited in the reception area until it was time to clock out. As I glanced to my right and looked through the closed glass door of one of the wings, I saw something moving from the waiting area to one of the closed consultation rooms. It was clear as anything. A figure moving almost gliding from one spot to another. I thought maybe I was tired and seeing things, but my colleague saw it too, and we both fled, locked up completely, signed out from work, and asked never to work up there again. I worked as a lifeguard while I was in high school. My town is rather small, and the public pool was built before World War II, and had many urban tales about people drowning or getting killed while working on electrical work. My friends and I didn't believe in any of these stories at first. After a few weeks of staying late by ourselves when we were waiting to work a party, we each had experienced things we couldn't explain. 
Most of these experiences were hearing footsteps that sounded like it was made by wet bare feet or hearing people talking. When I was scheduled to work a party, I would hang out on my phone, and any time I would hear these sounds, I would get up and leave the concession stand, thinking that the family had arrived early to set up for their party, and most of the time, no one was there. Usually everyone would chalk these up to the wind or us being tired from working in the sun all day, however, some things we couldn't explain was the showers turning on by themselves and the sound of a stall door slamming on its own. The truly scariest thing that happened to me was when my friend and I were alone and listening to the radio and it begins to turn to static. I checked the signal and it didn't fix the sound, so I said out loud to leave the radio alone and get out of the concession stand since you are not a lifeguard and the radio immediately fixes itself. We affectionately named the ghost Sunshine, and I began greeting it when I came to work.